Hello and welcome to something especially different. A little bit of a commentary on a rock paper shotgun article that got put out entitled Why Play a Fascist? Unpacking the Hideousness of the Space Marine. I've read many things in my life. This may be one of the most insulting and pathetic of them, from what I can recall at least. It's one man's impotent rage blasted out onto the internet, marinated with uh, pretty much all of their hatred. So I warn anyone with a hint of critical thinking to take this article in stride if they choose to read it or the video if you plan on listening to it. I'm not going to be reading the article, just so you know. I've already done that, so this will just be talking about some of the points in it. To be less charitable, this article is effectively the Red Scare, the labeling of those whom don't ally with the politics of the writer. It's a demonization of those who enjoy the setting and a lashing out at those with different values. The church lady finger wagging teamed up with the contempt of this style of writing. It is my belief we can not only cover all these topics, but help this lost soul heal their wounds or whatever has been bothering them because good lord above all right first off is the imperium fascist well first off let me answer if 40k is secretly a fashy undertaking the answer is no it's far too large and travel even with the warp is way too slow it can be instantaneous it could take a longer time or you might never make it or you pop up somewhere 10,000 years later blah 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 in actuality there are a number of government types within the Imperium it cannot micromanage and maintain the Imperium world by world in a fascistic model or pretty much like all of its socialist brothers in that manner most worlds are left to their own devices, much like the states in a modern country, until they do something warranting a reaction from a higher power, aka the Imperium. Do recall this is a setting with actual demons and monsters that will gladly Minecraft entire populations for the slip-ups of single individuals or small groups. While I would never want to live in such a place, the Imperium's heavy-handed nature is a response to the dangers they face. You can't really enjoy any degree of freedom if it means you're going to end up getting devoured by monsters. Not an argument for how it works, I'm just saying it's a dark, grim place that has a lot of unpleasant things, and it works in a particular way because that's the only real ways they have to function and yeah there's capital countries there's democratic country or well, let's say worlds let's be a little bit more generous a whole bunch of them just look through the planets and you'll see all the different types that they have all right point two 40k represents our modern world and is the old tired war horse of parody good lord every time you see a bad actor they always seem to pop this one out isn't it this that normal little thing it's like <laughs> it was a parody yeah and the eight, 1980s is a long time ago buddy not so much the imperium is more a play on the last days or final days of the roman empire with the space marines taking several design cues from romans and uh, roman legionnaires have you ever wondered why the uh MK6 guys have the little uh, things on their feet that look like toes. They're supposed to look like sandals with the like leg protectors that M the legionaries would wear. Sure, there are modern touches, but like cyberpunk, not all of them are something that makes sense in our modern context. Like they had personal fax machines that you carried around with you in some of the or one of the earlier editions. Just to point that out. Have we gotten by the parody thing that every bad actor seems to trot out? Eh, I'd say it's not, it's not an argument a serious person is going to put forward when it comes to 40k. 
it's more someone who doesn't know much and they just want to put that forward for the uninformed as an argument. Parody typically has short legs in terms of staying power and most adults can separate fiction from reality. So we don't need the whole kitty gloves thing. No, it doesn't represent the modern world. No, it's not a parody. And it hasn't been a parody for a long, long time. I would guess that at least half the people who are probably going to watch this, it wasn't a parody in their lifetime. So, let's move on to part three. Diversity washing. I could not believe he actually popped this one into there. Now, throughout the whole thing, he keeps making calls to a 40 to a couple different people, and one of them is a offer called Tim Colwell. And beyond the constant calls to this, the article maintains is screeching about what pisses the offer off pulling out the old and tired reactionary comments without an honest look into the complaints. To this, he lists Charon, which I'm never going to say his name right, and Gabriel, leaving the suggestion that if you disagree with them being Ultramarines in any way, it can only be because you're a hateful, evil person who is a ist of some manner. He suggests you're a bad person because you care about the setting and not the virtue signaling show he puts on. In my case, I hold that Saber should have made the game about the Death Watch to highlight the various chapters of Marines instead of just another fan wank to Ultramarines. Can you guess what my favorite one of my favorite chapters is? It's the Celestial Alliance and Imperial Fist successor. Hey, that would have been a cool one to see some of them in there, huh? But never mind that. The t casual disregard for the arguments has little to do with them being right and or wrong. Because they'd have to make an argument. After all, it seems the politically aligned are more afraid of losing power. You see, this casual enjoyer, as the writer calls himself, is more interested in projecting his own personal hatreds and bigotries. And, of course, keeping the company in the right camp. After all, you can't have the people who actually want it to do well actually get something they want when you got a well, political axe to grind. And the whole argument of diversity washing is a ridiculous one. Okay, yeah, guess what, buddy? There are a whole bunch of these chapters pull from various different groups of people. I know because you didn't look 10 seconds into it because you don't care. You're just making your argument because trust me, reading your article was one of the biggest, most bullshit things I have read because you seem to have a complete fear of Nazis being somewhere or fascist or whatever is that you can happen to summon up. And the truth is, you're just using it as a label to attack people. You're using a little-known unionizer from, let's see, Australia, who wrote an article next to no one read to push your ideas. You're reaching into things to talk and do all of this crazy BS of reaching into everything possible to try to claim every conceivable thing is somehow attached to some kind of fascistic movement that's there to, to beat women and eat everyone's food and to mock people of different colors when really it comes down to you're just angry at other people and that's fine you can do that which brings us to my last point because debunking this whole article is a complete waste of time if you read it you realize just how much it is so this is a personal aside. While I've been somewhat forceful in my pushbacks as I read through this article and considered the various elements, this stuck out to me. Life is a brutal place. It kicks you when you're down and it often leaves us feeling mocked at our lowest points. This passage that I'm going to that's on screen struck me in the same way that hearing Blue October's Hate Me did. 
So I wanted to add this. Wounds exist for a reason. They remind us of the bad things that we've experienced. The pain is there to urge us to not make the same mistakes again. You, ha you don't have to be Conan. You just have to have the courage to do the right thing when the time comes to be a true man. It's okay to grapple with the demands placed on society by you, or society places on you, and what men typically have to accept as being part of a man. You can do that. It's all right. It's okay to question that and to feel some bit of anger on what's expected of you. But the truth is, there is no escaping the reality and demand of being a man, no matter the system which takes root today or tomorrow. There's no magic bandage. There's no magic cure. It will always be tough. It will always ask things of you that you would rather it not ask you. Simply, I believe the anger isn't directed at the demand itself. But as we found or find ourselves so often in modern society, the lack of something worth suffering for, something worthy of the demands asked of us. And I hope in time that you can find some degree of peace so that you don't have to redirect your insecurities and anger at yourself, at everybody else around you, and project it into the internet like vomit. You don't have to be this way. And if you're a bad political actor, hey, you're not going to care. You're, you're going to go on with your own thing. But I think people need to consider why they're angry, why they're doing things. Because this entire article is bunk. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't prove anything. It's just a smack at people as a form of trying to seize control to hold some degree of power over them. It proves nothing. It offers nothing. It will be nothing more than another benchmark in the stupidity of people trying to project their insecurities, hatred, and bile onto something that other people enjoy because it makes them feel insecure. And I hope that this individual does better. But hey, I just couldn't stand there and look at all of this BS in, as I had seen it. And the more I read through it, the more I was like, you know, I could touch more in all of these things. I could talk about it forever, but there's no point. I hope everybody has a fantastic day, and at least this wasn't too much of a pointless aside. But hey, don't let these things get to you guys. There's better things to do. Just keep on keeping on. Keep your chin up. You don't have to care about the whimperings of petty people. Bye bye